Thank you. Um, I was a student of Eric Rich's when I entered seminary in 1974. Um, my first year there, and my first class with him was actually traveling down every Thursday to Oblate College, where he taught a course on Luther. And so we had a great, I have great memories of riding down Route 15 from uh, Gettysburg to uh, Oblate College for a whole semester and just uh, soaking in. And we had a nice relationship over the years. Uh, in his later years, I would come down here maybe two or three times a year and we'd go to lunch in Little Italy. And uh, that was always an enjoyable conversation as well. And I did have Eric, uh, maybe a year or two before his passing, come and speak at our church for one weekend. So that was an uh, enjoyable dinner we had with Bonnie and Eric and uh, some of his students. Uh, wonderful time. About 10 or 12 years ago, I was looking for a way to do one-on-one -on -one catechetical programs with people. Uh, it's just been a feature of ministry that I often get one or two adult catechumens at a time, which is hard to do a class then. So I was thinking, how can I do a program of catechesis for one-on-one -on -one uh, situations and it struck me that uh, the liturgy of the church has all the elements of the catechism in it for teaching purposes I mean the foundation is baptism of course but the Lord's Prayer is in uh, in the liturgy uh, the Ten Commandments are implied in the confession of sins of course and can be used as a self-examination method as Luther proposed uh, there's Holy Communion, and there's the Creed. Uh, and that the, the liturgy itself, uh, with the ancient principle of the way we pray shapes the way we believe, is a catechetical uh, instrument. So I did a uh, question and answer format and developed this, what I call liturgical catechism, and used it in my church. Uh, had no idea of publishing it. But then one of my fellow pastors that I know, uh, Sally Gaussman, uh, she and her husband and I and several other pastors meet every Tuesday morning for morning prayer at St. Peter's in York, not Rome. Uh, and uh, she was voicing the same frustration of, I need to teach I have a single adult catechumen. I need to do something to teach. And anybody got some uh, tools that I could use? And I said, well, I wrote this thing uh, for uh, my church. Maybe you'd like to use it. And Sally loved it and said, you ought to publish this. So that was about four or five years ago that I sent it off to uh, ALPB, Greg Fryer. And uh, Greg said, uh, I like it. And that began the long process that eventually led to the publication of it last year. So it's here. And I will sign it if you want me to, if you want to purchase one. Um, there's a Missouri Synod version as well, so, which uh, Dorothy Zelenko of ALPB did, adapted my work for the, for the Missouri Synod. I don't take any credit for that, but she really did a good job with adapting it for the uh, Missouri Synod's order of liturgy. Uh, so uh, that's basically it. Uh, I will just add a footnote for those of you, since uh, uh, Dr. Jensen's book was mentioned as well, uh, and maybe you don't I haven't seen Jensen in a long time. I uh, took some time last Advent to visit him. He's in Trenton, New Jersey. He is basically confined to his house these days because of limitations on his <coughs> movement. Um, but he is sharp as a tack as ever. Wonderful conversation. And he's still teaching. Uh, he says he has a seminar at his house. He says the students don't get credit and I don't get paid, but we have a good time. So uh, I just thought I'd throw that in about gents and uh, uh, appreciate more and more as I get older the teachers that I had. They were a real blessing of God in my life. So thank you.